Good evening, Commander, and welcome back to the Elite Dangerous University. Thanks for coming. Tonight, we're going to be flying through the dazzling and perfectly polished showroom of the very best of interstellar transport as we go through the ups, downs, and meaty middles of every single starship available for you to either covet or shun. The choice will be inevitably yours, but maybe, just maybe, you can leave this module a little more informed than before. Also, never buy the warranty, because unless you're the best pilot in history, you really won't be needing it. Educational courses are all about segmentation and categories, aren't they? So we're going to be covering the plethora of choices available to you in some sort of logical order. First up, we'll cover the smaller vessels. These pocket rockets include the Sidewinder, Eagle, Adder, Imperial Eagle, and Marks 3 and 4 of the Cobra and Viper class vessels. The Diamondback Explorer and Asp Scout also narrowly make it into this category. Then, moving up the ladder, we'll be looking at the industrial fleet, including the hauler, Type 6 transporter, Type 7 transporter, Type 9 heavy freighter, and the keelback military transport. After that, we'll be coming to the mid to heavyweight multi purpose craft, including the Asp Explorer, Imperial Courier, Python, and Imperial Clipper. Then comes the super heavy multi purpose craft, including such icons as the Anaconda and the Imperial Cutter. Second to last comes the Pleasure Boats, including the Dolphin, Orca, and Beluga Liners. And finally, we'll be looking at Warships, encompassing the Vulture, Federal Dropship, Federal Gunship, Federal Assault Ship, Fer de Lance, and finally, the Federal Corvette. All of these vessels can be extensively customized to suit a variety of roles. However, some are better at some tasks than others. Over the course of this module, we'll be looking at the best and worst attributes of these vessels, and we'll have the data to back it up. So, without further ado, let's get to it with the Pocket Rockets. There is only one vessel in our collection which we know that every single pilot has flown in, and that is the Sidewinder Mark I. First manufactured by Falcon de Lacy in 2982, the Sidewinder is the only craft approved for Pilots' Federation license exams and is given free of charge to any new commander when they first get their wings. The stock model is extremely lightweight with excellent maneuverability and agility. However, the tiny craft cannot fit high-powered thrusters, fusion plants, or significant defenses. With a maximum speed of only 255 meters per second, the Sidewinder can be outrun by most ships and is unlikely to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe in any sort of fight. However, it does boast a good stock jump range of over 24 light years and, due to its small profile, can be adapted to stealth flight quite easily. The Eagle Mark II is the smallest available craft produced by arms giant Core Dynamics. The single-seat fighter is one of the most versatile and maneuverable craft available, boasting an agility rating of 188 and a top boosted speed of up to 405 meters per second. A highly efficient and optimized power system enables the tiny craft to power up to three small weapon hardpoints, in addition to a utility subsystem. With a Type 3 internal compartment ideal for midweight shield generators, the Eagle can be extensively modified to be able to stand its ground to much larger craft through incredible agility and surprisingly fierce firepower. The Eagle is best utilized in a support role or in pack hunting formations. For many pilots, the Zorgon Peterson Adder is a natural progression from the Sidewinder, offering great versatility as a solid, lightweight, multi-role craft. The twin-seat craft can reach jump ranges exceeding 30 light years and, with a Class II weapon hardpoint included as standard, can fit heavy mining lasers or mid-weight weapons depending on the pilot's priorities. With two size 3 compartments on offer, the Adder can be fit for both haulage and mining duties, in addition to being a respectable combat craft for its size. 
a landmark cooperative effort between Core Dynamics and the Imperial Shipyards of Gutamaya produced the Imperial Eagle in 3301. With a maximum boost speed of 462 meters per second, a fully powered medium weapon rack, and space for a Class 3 shield generator, the Imperial Eagle can be fit to be one of the most lethal light fighters around. Perfect for surgical strikes, hit and run attacks, pack hunting, and fighter support roles. With a maximum jump range of over 25 light years, the Imperial Eagle can be deployed to combat sites rapidly and effectively, bringing great agility to bear to avoid fire from larger vessels while hammering down with its own significant firepower. For many commanders, the Cobra Mark III is also a natural evolution of the Sidewinder as a strong, lightweight, multi-purpose craft that can regularly punch above its weight. In active service for over 200 years, the design allows for generalist and specialist configurations. A large 16-ton fuel tank gives the vessel good range for deep space assignments, and with a maximum carrying capacity of 60 tons, can also be used as a lightweight supply craft. A max speed of 325 meters per second allows for strong maneuverability as well as flight speed. However, the Cobra doesn't stand up well against specialist warships or specialist freighters. A hybrid multi-purpose craft, the Cobra Mark III is an excellent choice for commanders wishing to keep their options open. For a more heavyweight variant, consider the Cobra Mark IV, which, although much slower at a max speed of 228 meters per second, has upgraded weaponry and defense capability, as well as being able to carry a maximum 88 tons of cargo. The Viper Mark III is a lightweight and highly agile strike fighter that is commonly seen on the flanks of naval task forces across the sector. With four powered weapon hardpoints and a maximum speed of 368 meters per second, the Viper III can outrun and outmaneuver most opposing vessels, exploiting enemy weaknesses and keeping her own out of sight. As a dedicated fighter craft, the Viper is streamlined to maximize speed and heat efficiency, and so has a very poor deployment range, being only able to carry four tons of fuel without extra emergency tanks. However, as a warship, the Viper can be highly successful in surgical and packhound assault tactics in fleet warfare or guerrilla attack modes. As with the Cobra, the Mark IV Viper sacrifices some speed and agility for greater armor and customization options, with an additional two Class IV systems compartments allowing for stronger shields, hull reinforcements, or interdiction systems. The Lacon Diamondback design is famed for long-range solo assignments in enemy territory or deep space and, at present, is the only specialist reconnaissance craft available for public purchase. Both the Explorer and Scout designs are specially designed to operate for long periods without service and at extremely long ranges. Many intrepid explorers begin their pathfinding career in a Diamondback hull and enjoy the stability and reliability of the design. The smaller of the craft, the Scout, has a maximum jump range of over 30 light years and can carry a maximum of 16 tons of fuel in her dedicated tank. With only four compartments to choose from, however, the ability of the pilot to reconfigure the vessel for different roles is severely limited. This problem is mitigated slightly with the larger hull of the Explorer design with six internal compartments, including two roomy Class IV suites, perfect for additional fuel, field repair modules, fuel scoops, or shield generators. The Explorer hull boasts a massive jump range of over 37 light years, one of the best hop-to-hop -hop ranges of any vessel in current circulation. The ASP Scout is a streamlined and lightweight version of the ASP Explorer frame, more on that later, which, like the Diamondback, is designed for long-range assignments. Much of the vessel's power conduits are hardwired directly into the frameshift drive, with significant reductions in weaponry and tactical systems. With a maximum speed of 300 meters per second and an agility rating of only 165, the Scout design fares poorly in combat roles. However, with a jump range of up to 33 light years and a carrying capacity of over 50 tons, the Scout can triumph from reconnaissance and deep space supply operations, as well as a strong exploratory and pathfinding vessel. Next time on the Elite Dangerous University. We'll be profiling the backbone of interstellar industry with the haulage lineup. 
These craft delivered the nappies you were raised in and deserve your attention. Whether you're intending to be a small-time courier or fully-fledged exporter, you'll need to get acquainted with the haulers. The Elite Dangerous University has a syllabus of 18 classes split into four modules. Our bandwidth is limited, but we hope to be able to broadcast at least once per Terran week. The EDU receives no funding from any solar or interstellar governments or credit unions, and relies entirely on its patrons and alumni for its continued existence. The suggested tuition fee is five credits per month, payable to the university's sole faculty member. Financial links can be found below the viewing pane. We hope to be able to add more modules in the future to discuss recent revelations from the Pilots' Federation in their 4.0 charter, soon to be pressed into law, after pilot projects in remote sectors. Thank you for watching. We share knowledge, and we hope you will too, by subscribing, activating the bell notification system, and sharing what you have learned with others. Fly safe, and we'll see you next time.